my friends. Now, no Vlogmas is complete without a how to become a raw vegan video. This one is made special for all the newbies out there who are looking towards maybe doing a raw in January or trying to become a raw vegan in January. This one will offer what I did to become a raw vegan and steps that you can take to move forward in that health goal. The first step, which I believe is the most important step, is to actually become vegan. Now, if you're already vegan, that's cool. If not, you're going to need to work your way towards becoming a vegan. And before I go any further with the rest of the steps, I do want to say that you need to be careful with the word transition. Transition means that you use up what you have and then you don't buy it again. It doesn't mean that you go out for lunch with your friends and say, eh, there's cheese on the salad, I'll order it this one time, I'm in transition. No, you don't order it again. You don't eat it again. You use up what's in your house, and say you have a box of frozen chicken that you bought two weeks ago, eat the rest of that so it doesn't go to waste, or just give it away. You can do either or, but once it's gone, you can't justify purchasing it again because that's true transition. A lot of people will use the word transition and just stay in transition forever and they just never get to their goals because they use it as a crutch, as a justification to continue doing the same things that they do because they're in transition. They'll give it up in one day, but you have to actually set a date, set a decision and say once it's gone, that's it. So. The first step is to go vegan, obviously, and great resources for that. I would like you to go on Netflix and watch Cowspiracy, watch What the Health, and watch Forks Over Knives. Then you can go to earthlings.com, or if you can find the video elsewhere, go and watch Earthlings. These four movies will help you understand why we should be vegan and live a vegan lifestyle. So once you've got that down, once you've given up the meat, the dairy, the eggs, and the other animal products like honey, leather, wool for the lifestyle aspect, once you have gotten rid of all of that, and yes, dairy includes cheese and ice cream, and yes, this includes eggs from free range backyard hens and that kind of thing. This is if you want to be vegan, you have to take those steps to get there. Now, once you're vegan, then you can start cutting out certain things to get to raw. If vegan is your goal, you can stop here and that's fine. But if you want to improve your diet and move forward, move into a healthier vegan diet, because you can be a junk food vegan, um, but if you want to be a raw vegan, follow these next steps. The first one would be to eliminate all oils. We want to get rid of the cold press olive oil, the coconut oil, avocado oil, peanut oil, and sesame oil. We want to get rid of the oils. I consider them processed foods. They are 100% fat. There's no fiber. There's a little bit of nutrition, but we can get our omega-3s from fruits and greens. But also the oils are very, very, very high in omega-6, which can impede your own conversion of omega-3 into EPA and DHA. So not only that, the oils cause insulin resistance, which impedes your sugar usage. So fats, again, have been tagged with radioactive material and once they're ingested into the human body, they've watched what the body does with these fats and they're immediately stored as fat. So even though it's healthy fat, we should only be consuming a small amount, just enough for our body's needs. And we don't need to go overboard on all of this healthy fat because we just don't need it. When people say to me that they need nuts and seeds and oily things to satiate them, this is a false illusion. We need sugar for energy and satiation because when you're, you know, say you're at work and you're busy, 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 and you're like, oh, I just need some energy. So you grab a handful of nuts. This isn't going to give you energy. Remember, radioactively tagged fats are stored as fat. They're not used as energy. So if you need energy, fruit. Fruit is your number one thing. So go grab some fruit and save the nuts and seeds for your evening salads. But we are going to get rid of all oils. So the first step is to just get rid of all the oils. 
learn to cook with water, learn to cook with herbs and spices, but no more oils. Second step, cutting out the grains. We are not herbivores, we are frugivores. If you look on the taxonomy chart, we are frugivorous primates, like apes, chimpanzees, bonobos, we are like them. So we should be eating predominantly fruits and greens with a small amount of nuts and seeds. And they eat insects, but I am vegan, so I don't eat insects. But we need to cut out the grains. Herbivores eat grains, such as cows, horses, donkeys, giraffes. These guys eat the grains. We are supposed to be eating fruits mainly and leafy greens for our food source. That's our species specific diet. So the second step will be to get rid of the grains. Now we can do sprouted um, lentils if you want to do sprouted beans, which is perfectly fine on a raw vegan diet. You can do sprouted quinoa. Quinoa is actually a seed, not a grain. So you could do that as well if you wanted to keep a couple of those things still in your raw diet. You're more than welcome to include those as well. The third thing we get rid of, which is probably the hardest, is the root vegetables. So things like potatoes and beets, carrots, those heavy earthy ones, I consider them survival foods. We relied on them in times of famine to satiate us over the winter because they were calorie dense. And yes, the starch fills us up and satiates, but they aren't necessarily the most ideal if you're moving over to a raw vegan diet. Now, as I said, you guys, cooked foods are not necessarily toxic or poisonous. They're just not ideal. So if you do still eat them, that's cool. If you feel okay eating them, that's totally fine. But if you're moving towards a raw vegan diet, then they gotta go. <laughs> they, I find they're very mucus forming to me and I feel heavy after eating them. My heart also starts to race because they've been cooked um, and I do get a little bit sweaty if I have. And this was my experience um, probably over two and a half years ago when I had a cooked vegan meal, I had slight reaction. It wasn't like a big reaction, but I could notice very subtle changes in my body that were negative towards the cooked root vegetables. So that is one of the things that has to go if you're trying to be a raw vegan, but I leave it for this step because getting rid of the oils and the grains is a little easier, but the potatoes kind of hang around a little longer. I also wanted to mention in this step, once you've been getting rid of the oils, the grains, and the roots, you need to learn to replace those calories with fruits and vegetables. If you're not replacing those calories with more calories from fruits and vegetables, then you will be hungry and you will crave. So once you get rid of the oils, replace with more calories from fruits and greens. Then when you get rid of the grains, replace those calories with more fruits and greens. When you get rid of the potatoes, replace those with more fruits and greens. Now you should be eating quite a bit of fruits and greens with a small amount of steamed vegetables. And that's the last one to go. You can keep those in your diet if you're not concerned about being all raw. Steamed vegetables are actually not that bad. If you need to fall back onto cooked food, I always recommend falling back to that last step, which would be the steamed vegetables. You can steam vegetables and add a little bit of salt-free seasoning to them if you want, if you need something like that included with maybe a raw salad or something. But as you default back, always default the steps this way. Don't default from raw food to oils. You don't want to go that far back. You want to go just down the one step if you need to readjust yourself, recompose yourself, and then move forward again. You don't ever want to go way far back. Just do one step back. Then you want to make sure that you are tracking your calories to make sure that you're ingesting enough energy so that you can go through your day. And if you don't eat enough throughout the day, you're going to end up with cravings. And this is one of the main reasons why people fail doing a raw vegan diet. They just don't eat enough and they don't eat often enough. So this is one step that you have to be aware of from the very beginning to make sure that you track your calories and track your nutrition as well. Because once you get to know your nutrition and you get to know the portion sizes that you need, you don't need to track as often. And you can find nutritional deficiencies. For example, if one day you didn't have very much calcium, the next day you could incorporate more calcium rich foods like tahini, bok choy, and sea vegetables. You also need to shop more often. Learn to shop more often. You're not going to be doing these gigantic, massive grocery hauls 
calls. You're going to shop more often for food that you need for about two or three days and then go back. It's a really quick shop. It's not this big ordeal, so it doesn't take a lot of time, but then you're always gonna have fresh food. I know that if my food is going wilty, I'm not as likely to eat it. I love to have my food fresh and crisp and ready to go. It's really much more motivating to eat those foods than once they've sat for a while. I have had some people ask me if I could make a one week shopping list for my 30 day meal plan. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do that because if you buy fruit and vegetables for an entire week, most likely by Friday, they're going to be wilty or not great or some of them might be turning bad already. So by Friday, you're not really gonna wanna make stuff because it's not going to be fresh like it would be on day one. So I always recommend shop more often and learn how to stop off after work and grab what you need for the next day or two. Always buy bananas when you go out and always make sure that you top up on your staple ingredients like dates, lemons, spices, bananas, lettuce, cucumbers, and tomatoes are my staples. So I make sure that those are always in the house and then I just get the extra things if I want to have something different during the week or if I have a new recipe idea, I will pick those up. But you have to make sure that you always shop more often. Next step, learn to say no. No is a protective shield and I've done quite a few videos on this for Vlogmas, so watch for those or head back into my video list and see if you can find them. But learning to say no is incredibly important. We need to learn that no is actually a positive word that protects us from those foods that we no longer want to be eating. So learning to say no and standing your ground. If you say yes one or two times here and there, people don't take you seriously and you don't take yourself seriously. So you need to stand your ground, you need to say no because the more often you say no, the easier it gets and the more people take you seriously. Because now a days I am taken quite seriously. If I say no, it's no, and they're not gonna ask again. And for the most part, people don't ask me anymore because they know the answer. I was talking to my sister one day and she was asking me how I deal with things with my dad because my dad is not a vegan and he's not raw, but he does enjoy vegan foods. I told her, well, every time we go out, we always go to a vegan place. And she's like, what? what, how did, you, what, how? Because she always wants to be vegan and she tries very hard, but it's hard when my dad comes over and he brings animal products or whatever, she ends up saying yes or eating them. And I told her it's because you say yes, he constantly does that. And it's no different because we are both sisters to the same father. And however, he won't bring food for me, but he will still bring food for her because she allows it. She allows it once in a while. Sometimes she doesn't, but sometimes she does. And she's trained him to know that she'll say yes. Maybe she'll say yes, I'll bring it and see. But with me, he knows I'm gonna say no and I'm strong with that no. So it makes the relationship a lot easier because I feel protected. And he does actually take time to take me to vegan places, which I greatly appreciate. But yes, you guys need to learn to say no and it's okay to say no. It's a protective measure for yourself so that you can continue on your health journey. Learn to tell yourself daily affirmations. Every single morning, get up and tell yourself what you want for your life that you're a raw vegan, that you eat healthy, that you exercise, that you meditate, that you plan your day and think about things to further you in your health goals. Daily affirmations are so powerful, we need them in our lives for so many different things, not just health, but wealth, relationships, our job, our careers. We need to start doing those motivations and when you talk to yourself every single day, giving yourself those positive, uplifting things, finding raw vegan community, watching YouTube videos, immersing yourself into the vegan world and filling up your social media with really inspiring and motivating photographs of raw food. It really helps to focus you and continue with those uh, daily affirmations. And even when you feel really strong and powerful, keep saying them to yourselves. You want to really solidify that. I tell them to myself even today and it's been over three years. I love my affirmations and they make me feel so much better. Two more tips to becoming a raw vegan. You want to learn new recipes 
and learn to create and learn more variety. Fall in love with foods that you never had before. Try your hand at making your own recipes. Even if they suck the first time you try it, try it again. Maybe think of different combos, maybe tweak someone else's recipes so that you like it a little bit better. But I want you to start creating in the kitchen and learning more about the variety of foods that you can include in your raw diet. This will help with boredom and help with the mundane, you know, every day I'm having a smoothie kind of a routine that we fall into. And a routine is good because once you get into that routine of eating the same thing all the time, it becomes your food source, but we still do need that variety and that creative aspect of our meals. So keeping the variety and the creative creativity up will really help with that transition as well. And finally, inspire others. It is so fulfilling to be able to inspire all of you guys and it keeps me on track even though I'm not going to fall I still am so motivated to stay on this lifestyle and keep posting things and really help you guys to stay on the road so once you get there you can inspire others to be healthier and that way it's a ripple effect into the world and we can help to change it for the better so I hope you guys like this video and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave comments below and I'll try to get to everybody. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe to my channel to get notifications for more. Now, if you guys need recipe ideas, I have a 30 day meal plan. I have a winter recipe book and my new book, my dips and dressings book. If you're having issues finding sauces and salad dressings and dips for your veggies, you can head over to this link right here. It's also in the description box below and grab your copy of my ebooks if you want. You can also get print versions of the 30 day meal plan, the winter recipe book and the dips and dressings book all on Amazon. Just search Melissa Ramondi in the search box on Amazon and all of my books should come up. There's also again a link in the description below. You can find me on Facebook, Lissa's Raw Food Romance, on Instagram at Raw Food Romance and on Snapchat, Lissa Raw Vegan.